everyone. God bless you. Welcome to Life Ticket Church Facebook Live. We are so excited to uh, be here with you. I'm, I'm excited to be up here just to be able to uh, talk to you all today. And um, I, I know it's been a while, you know, my husband has been here, but I'm so excited to be here with you today. I guess I'm going to wait like maybe one minute. Um, just to give some other people a chance to join because I'm not going to be with you all that long. I'm going to try to not be long-winded, but move forward with what the Lord um, has to say. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, the next few Sundays um, spending time with you um, to talk about the topic of doing exactly what Jesus did. You know, we, we can do exactly what Jesus did. We can do it. Um, so we're excited this month just to be focusing on that. We're hoping to move into the teaching and actually activating you so that you can have motivation and be encouraged and know that you can do exactly what Jesus did. So I guess I'm going to go on for those of you who join maybe at the end or in the middle because I'm hoping that I can get through this so that you can get on with your day. Um, just uh, look at this uh, taping again. So I'm just going to open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. We welcome your presence. We just welcome you right now, Father. And we just ask that you just have your way, Lord. Have your way. Father, I decrease that you may increase. And Father, I pray for every listening ear, every person that is tuning in to this broadcast on today. Father, I pray that you would touch them, Lord. Touch them. Let this word, Father, just encourage them. Help them to be motivated to just move forward and, and just to do exactly uh, what, what we are saying in this teaching today. Lord God, I pray that you would bless every person's heart, bless their minds, bless their souls and their spirit. For those who need healing on today, Lord God, I pray even at the, the sound of the word of God, just at listening at the word of God, that their bodies will be miraculously healed. Those who are feeling down, discouraged. Lord God, I just declare the joy of the Lord over every listener, oh God, that is hearing on today. Father, that person, Lord God, that may feel like they want to give up, Lord. God, I just declare, Father God, right now your Holy Spirit is touching them and they feel just a, a, just a strength and ability to just go on as never before. Lord God, just have your way, Lord God. God, I thank you, Father, for your strength on today. I thank you, Lord God. I just submit my mind, my body, my soul, and my spirit to you, Lord, and I just say, have your way, Father. Have your way. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing me to uh, just preach this word with a demonstration of spirit and power. I thank you for the boldness, oh God. I now step into the boldness. I release the boldness of God, that spirit of boldness, oh God, to preach your word, Lord God. I rebuke every distraction. I come against that right now. Anything that may try to mess with the, 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 the video, I come against that now. And Holy Spirit, I say just have have your way. Have your way. We thank you, Lord, and I thank you for blessing every listener. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, I'm going to repeat this again. Repeat after me. Say, I can do exactly what Jesus did. Say it again. Say, I can do exactly what Jesus did. I'm going to be coming from, I'm going to try to focus on one scripture today. Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 through 20. Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 through 20. I'm going to um, just be reading from the King James Version. And it says, verse 16 says, Then the eleven disciples, they went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we thank God for this word. We are going to be focusing on this word today. And um, I believe that this passage of scripture, it is a powerful story of the Great Commission. I believe this scripture is talking to you and I. And I believe that these few verses, this is a mandate that Jesus is giving us. This is a command. It is a duty or a responsibility given to you and I by Jesus. I believe that Matthew 28 verses 16 through 20, it's the plan and objective for our lives. I believe that this scripture is letting us know it's, it's, it's where Jesus, he is inviting you and I into the narrative of God. He is inviting you and I to participate in what he did on earth. And he is letting us know there are four things that I am getting from Matthew 28 verses 16 through 20. Number one, he is letting us know we must go and make disciples. We're going to go deeper into that. We must go and make disciples. Number two, this scripture is letting us know we must not doubt what he has called us to do. We must not doubt what he has called us to do. Number three, write this down. All authority has been given to him. We're going to try to break that down a little bit. All authority has been given to him. And number four, he is always with us. He is always with us. So let's talk about in the scripture, Jesus told them, he said, I want you to go and make disciples. In other words, what Jesus is saying, he wants you and I, he wants us to help others learn of Jesus. Um, he, he, when he told the disciples, I want you to go and make disciples, not only he wants them to help others learn of Jesus, in other words, he wants them to go and help others believe in Jesus, but also he wanted them going and making disciples, also meaning that he wants them to help others obey his words. So many of you, when you look at Matthew 28, 16 through 20, you may be thinking that, well, that doesn't apply to me. That doesn't apply to me. That, that was for, you know, that's only for the pastors. You know, this scripture, she's trying to put this on us. You, you're probably thinking that's only for the pastors. That's only for the evangelists. That's only for the older saints, the, se the seasoned warriors to go and make disciples. But I'm not here to try to convince you that, <laughs> you know, this is for you. I, I just, I think that's something that you're going to have to go one-on-one -on -one with you and the, and the Lord in your closet and allow him to give you revelation. But I want to tell you, I believe that Matthew 28, it does apply to us. Okay. There is a, a very uh, well-known man. His name is Robbie Dawkins. He um, is a well-known evangelist. He goes all around the world um, just um, equipping people to, to, to go and make disciples, to, to, to go and be the hands and feet of Jesus, the hands and feet of Jesus. So in one of his books, he explained that the word Christian, I just want to say this, the word Christian means little Christ. And little Christ, it was a description that outsiders, they gave to people that walked like Jesus did. So Jesus, I believe in this scripture, he is not only calling you and I to go and make disciples, but let's go even further. I believe that in this passage of scripture, Matthew 28, Jesus is also inviting us to be disciples and or followers of Jesus. Jesus is inviting you and I to walk alongside him and live the action with him. It's not just, you guys, we're living in a time, it's not just about us following instructions anymore, but he 
wants us to walk alongside him. This is Jesus, but I'm walking alongside him and I am living the action with him. Christ, he is inviting you and I into being followers of Christ because I'm, I want to break this down on what a disciple is because a disciple is someone who followed and not only spoke the words or heard the words, but they live the action with that individual. So, for example, if someone had a disciple, they were doing life together. It was not something uh, that they were just uh, just uh, following instructions. Again, I'm, I'm going to keep putting emphasis on that. But they were actually walking it out together. So the truth is that the Christian lifestyle is not boring. A lot of people think that being a believer, being a Christian is, is very boring. A lot of people say that, but it's not. The truth is that following Jesus Christ, it is one of the greatest adventures that we can ever go on. It is one of the most exciting and greatest adventures as, as, that we can ever go on. I, I want to even say this. We are living in a time, you guys, Jesus he is still working miracles. We're living in a time where Jesus, he is still in hot pursuit of people. He is still in that place where he is calling you and I into a deeper relationship with him. So being a follower of Jesus is not something that we need to feel stressed about or anxious about or heavy about, but understand that we are being pressed even more into and Christ, he is calling you and I into a deeper place and he wants you and I to understand that there is a responsibility there is a responsibility that we have in walking that out as Christ followers and that there is a work to be done you guys we got work to do there's a work to be done and there are words that you and I have to communicate so that this world may know him so he is inviting you and I, Matthew 28, he's inviting us to be a part of that. And he is inviting the world to come, as Paul said, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. That is what our life is there for. So that example that Jesus showed us in, in the word, it, and he, he wants us to live in action, not, not just follow instructions. One thing I want you to know, I'm going to go even, even further. God, he is looking for people who are available. Are you available? That's my question to you. God is looking for people who are available. Understand, write this down. God's gift to us is ability. God's gift to us is ability. But our gift to God is availability. I think this is such an important statement. I'm going to repeat it. God is looking for people who are available. My question to you is, are you available? God's gift to us is ability, but our gift to him is availability. So God is saying to you and I, he's, this is Jesus speaking. He said, look, you go first. You go first. You'll be available and you step out. And then he's speaking to you again. He said, and then once you do that, I will empower you in the moment. So we have to understand that God, he does his part, but then we have a part to play as well. And I'm going to go slow because I feel like I was going <laughs> too fast. I'm slowing down so you can get what I'm saying. We are living in a time that's always been this way. God does his part, but we have a part to play as well. Well, Lord, I'm, oh, um, can you pray for me that God will show me what, what I'm supposed to do? No, come on, just go. God is saying, I need you to step out. And then as you step out, I'm going to empower you in the morning, in, in that moment. So God, he is inviting you and I to be a part of the unfolding of God's kingdom reign. It's a high calling that is on each of our lives. 
and not necessarily, it's not a simple journey, but it's a step-by-step process of faith that is available to everyone. Whether you are a brand new Christian or whether you are a pastor of a mega church. So repeat after me, say that I, God is calling me to go and make disciples. And repeat after me, say God's gift to me is ability, but my gift to God is availability. We must ask ourselves, just just meditate on that question, allow God to speak, are you available? Because I think that's what he's really focusing on today. Are you guys available? All right, and I have more to say. I'm going to skip all that. Another um, part I wanted to talk to you all about was that we must not doubt. That scripture in Matthew 28, um, it talks about how some of those, the 11 disciples, they doubted. They doubted. In that moment, they doubted that that was really Jesus or not. But they, there was some doubt there. I want to let you know, in reading Matthew 28, Jesus still commissioned the 11 disciples even though they were in a place of doubt. Jesus still commissioned the 11 disciples even when they were still in that place of doubt. So many of you today, you may be doubting yourself. You may may be unsure that you have what it takes to go and make disciples. You may be unsure. You know, I... (laughs) I don't know if I can walk out this calling that God has placed in my life. You may be unsure. I don't know if I can go and pray for a person to be healed. You may be unsure. You may be unsure. I I don't even know if I can go up to a complete stranger and start praying for them. But you may also be the one. I'm going to go even further. You may think that you're not capable. But this is what I wanted to say. We think that our doubt disqualifies us. But it does not. It does not. Our doubt does not disqualify me. My doubt does not disqualify me. I'm going to say it another day, another way. We are not disqualified by our doubts. The 11 disciples were still used. Jesus still used them, even in the place of their doubt. We are often distracted by our shortcomings and our sense of limitation But the reality is, you guys, it's not about us, but it's about him. It's not about me. This is not about me, but this is about him. It's about me fulfilling his agenda. But I want to go here. But in actuality, when we think that we are disqualified, we are actually qualified. Satan tries to put all types of thoughts in our mind. And ha- he's a liar. <laughs> Half the time all that stuff he's saying is really the opposite of what he's saying. But understand, when we think we are disqualified, we are qualified. God, he loves demonstrating his power through those of us who think that we are not capable. When we think that we are not the right person, that actually means that we are the right person. Jesus, he loves demonstrating his power through those who think that they just don't have it. Our shortcomings, our sense of limitations, all of those things, they bring about a reality about us that says it's really about him and not about us. So um, I want to talk to you, doubt and unbelief, I was going to say something, I guess I'll say it, doubt and unbelief. I want you all to know they're not the same thing. Um, Unbelief, I'm I'm not condoning that, no. (laughs) Unbelief, I don't agree with that, but doubt and unbelief are not the same thing. Um, I want to explain, unbelief is where we limit God. So for example, when we start saying, this can't happen, this can't be. Unbelief, it obstructs and it works against. Unbelief discredits God. But when you hear me talking about doubt, doubt um, is where you are not sure how it's going to happen. 
How it's like doubt is where how can this happen? How can it be? You're unclear as as how the process is going to work. Okay? So long story short, we are not going to doubt does not disqualify us. Don't let doubt stop you in your tracks. Just, just because you doubt or you may be unsure, oh, can I get out here and do what God has called me to do? It, doubt does not disqualify you, okay? Doubt, doubt, say it again with me. Doubt does not disqualify you. When you think that you are disqualified, you are actually qualified. Lay your hands on your, your chest and say, I am qualified. I am qualified to do exactly what Jesus said I can do, okay? Another thing I wanted to uh, point out to you was that in this scripture, Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, for those of you who join um, us uh, kind of late, um, he talks about how all authority, Jesus said that all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. So when he, in other words, when he said that, if Jesus said that all authority has been given to, to him, guess what? All authority has been given to me too. Say, I have authority. Say that to yourself. Say, I have authority. Say it out loud because you, you by yourself. Say, I have authority. Okay. So understand Christ has been given his authority for the benefit of the church, the body of Christ to reinstate us to that place of authority that Adam and Eve walked away from. So, you know, we are not waiting on more authority. The thing is, is that we need to step out in authority. Repeat after me. Say, I need to step out in authority. So Satan, he does everything he can to try to keep you and I from walking in our place of authority. So as we step out to minister with the authority that we have in Jesus Christ, it's important that we understand that just as Jesus was one with the Father, we are also one with him. The scripture that I want to use for that, I'm just going to paraphrase it. John for, uh, chapter 14 verses 9 through 10. Um, it talks about Jesus. He answered and he, he told Philip, he's like, even at, after I have been among you for such a long time, he says, anyone who has seen me has seen the father. And he said to Philip, he said, how can you say, show us the father? You know, and Jesus said, don't you believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? And, the, and he, and then Jesus began to say the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the father living in me who is doing the work. So we have to understand we are, we are not also, we're not speaking on our own authority, but we are under the authority of God. So I want to go back to that point about how Satan, how he will do everything to try to prevent you and I from walking in our authority. Fear is one of those things. Fear. He's always trying to, to put fear. Doing things like this. Having to get up and speak in front of people. He always tries to fight me with fear. But because of fear, I want to let you know, when we choose, fear is going to come. But when we choose to stay in that place of fear, when we stay in the place of fear, we don't understand the authority we have. Because of fear, and because we make the decision to stay in that place of fear, we do not have an understanding of the authority we have. So understand that authority, I want to compare this, authority in the world is fear-based, but authority in God is love-based. Say that with me. Authority in the world is fear-based. But authority in God is love based because first John 4 and 18, it says the one who fears is not made perfect in love. And, and it, it talks about, I want to go even further and say Christ himself, he was not operating on earth as an all powerful God, but rather he operated on the authority that comes from God. So that is what we must do. We must operate on the authority that comes from our father also. To walk in godly authority means that we are walking under godly authority. And the two are inseparable. So, and write this down. Authority is not a matter of doing. 
Authority is not a matter of doing, but it's a matter of being. It is about identity, you guys. It's about identity. Write this down. Authority is a not a matter of doing. It's a matter of being. It's about identity. So in other words, let's just make this very short. We need to activate what God has placed inside of us. The authority is there. It's already there. We just need to walk in the authority that he's already given us. So we see all over the world what's going on. We see what happens in our communities, um, just different places in the world. You know, what's lacking in our community is, 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 is activating what God has given us. My prayer for you is, and I, for even for myself, is that we will step out and activate it. All the rights of Christ has been given to us by his Holy Spirit. Last thing. And I'm about to close. I have two more parts that I want to explain. Another part, I, I want to encourage you all. In that scripture, he also talked about, he said that he is always with us. He is always with us. A lot of you, you may not feel, feel, that word feel. One thing, let me tell you. Don't go by your feelings. Stop going by your feelings. Because I'm going to tell you, um... <sighs> Especially doing ministry, those of us who have made the decision to do what God has called us to do. Nine times out of ten, you ain't going to feel like doing it. I'm going to be honest with you. You're not going to feel like doing it. So this is a tip I want to give to you. Stop going by your feelings. You are never going to probably feel like doing it. Okay? I hate to say this, but I want to encourage you. And God, and I want to tell you, I want to encourage somebody that's going through discouragement. Because I believe that there's someone that's listening. If you're not on now, you're going to listen later. There's someone that's going through discouragement. I want to encourage you. But um, understand that. God is always with us. He said that in his scripture, Matthew 28, read it. He says, lo, I'm with you always. You may not feel as if you are ready to go and tell others about Jesus. You may not feel like um, you are in a place to minister to someone. You may be the one that's saying, oh, well, dang, I'm not ready to minister. I, I need ministry myself. Stop that. <laughs> you may feel out of it. Feel. Remember, I'm using the word feel, feel, feel. Stop going by the way you feel. You may feel disqualified. You may feel like you're not capable. But we have got to understand, he said that for a reason. He is with us. Stop going how you feel. Stop thinking that you're not capable, that you're not qualified. Understand, go by this. He is with me. He is always with me. He's with me regardless of my circumstances. Well, I want to wait until I get... I get right in my body. I want. I need to wait until I get, I get better. How can I go out there and pray for somebody that's sick and I'm sick myself? Get out there and heal somebody. He's with you. Just do it. Don't go by the way you feel. He is always with you. Say that with me. Put yourself in it. Say, he is always with me. He is always with me. So it doesn't matter how I feel. God, you are with me. It doesn't matter if I don't feel qualified. God, you are always with me. He is with you and I on every occasion. So we have learned today. I, I just want to encourage you guys. We can do exactly what Jesus did. We understand now. We are, have been called to go and make disciples. Also, he's calling us to be disciples and followers of, of Jesus. Um, we must not doubt what God has called us to do. We must understand all authority has been given to him. But therefore, you and I, we have authority. And we must understand that God is always with us. I want to leave you with this. The Western church, the church in the Western area, you know, us, we have fallen asleep. To the reality of God's power in our lives. Rather than us ministering with grace and with the authority and with authentic love, which brings change and real transformation. What's happening, I see in the Western church, we're getting caught up in rules and judgmentalism. But yet, when you look at the news, y'all, I'm getting to the point, I can't even look at the news, but I'm just saying, even if I don't look at the news, you just go out in the world, you see what's happening. Our nation, our world is crying out for hope. 
You look around and you see that our cities, our communities, they are in desperate need of a people of God. That's you and I who genuinely know Christ, who live out and reflect his love. Again, my question to you, are you available? What's needed are not more Christians, but more Christ followers. There's real authority there. And there is a freedom that will break through the sickness and the suffering and the despair that we see in our world today. So what does it mean when I talk about the church? What does it really mean when I say the church? What it, does it mean to be the church? It means to be an expression of Christ to the world. And it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That people are going to encounter him by encountering us because Jesus is with us and also he is in us. So this month, you guys, this month of November, I want to ignite the vision in you. I want to encourage you. I want to empower you and dare you to step out into the things that you were created for since the beginning of time. You can do exactly what Jesus did. All right. So right now I want to pray for you guys. I want to pray. I want us to, and I want you to go back later, read Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 through 20. I want to pray for, there's someone out there that is discouraged. I heard the Lord say that. Pray for those people who are discouraged. You, I, I don't know why you're discouraged. I don't know the person that's discouraged. Is it be, maybe, is it because of ministry? I don't know if I'm ministering to some pastors out there or some people, believers that know they have a calling, but they just feel discouraged right now. Um, but right now I want to pray for those who are discouraged right now, we want the Holy Spirit just to come and reveal to us that we really have everything we need through him dwelling on the inside of us. We have everything that we need on the inside of us to do what he has called us to do. So let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father. We thank you for this word that is gone for. And Father, I have done, <laughs> I leave this to you. I have done the best that I could, Father. And what you have given me, I have released this word. And um, I am confident in your word. I believe that it is touching the hearts of your people. And Father, um, first, I just want to pray for those right now who may feel discouraged. Lord, I, I just bind, rebuke, I take authority over the spirit of discouragement. And I speak over that, that person or those persons right now. I hear the Lord saying to you to be strong and courageous. He's telling you right now. He says, be strong. He says, be courageous. He said that I am with you. I am with you. He's telling you to move from that place of discouragement. He, he's saying that you don't need to be discouraged. He said, because I am your God. So make a decision. And I hear the Lord saying, he, and I'm, I'm speaking just as, as the spirit gives me. He's telling you, move from the place of discouragement. Don't choose to stay there and just begin to step out in what I called you to, to do. He said, it's okay. Once you make that decision that no, and you come against the spirit of the scripture, like, no, I will not give into it. He says, I will empower you step out right now. So right now I pray for that person to person. We just release the spirit of courage over them right now, that they will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his, his might right now. Touch them, Lord, whoever you are, just say, Lord, just repeat after me. Say, I am strong. I am courageous. Just say, I renounce the spirit of discouragement, but I will go forward. I will go forward. I will go forward. Say, I will go forward. As you're saying that God is empowering you, there's something that is beginning to take place within you right now. Come on, just say it right now. Touch that person, Lord. And God, I pray for every person that is here that may feel like that they don't even have what it takes 
to do what you call them to do. I'm, I'm speaking to people right now that may feel like they're disqualified, that they don't have the ability to do exactly what you did. But Father, I pray right now that you would touch their hearts, touch their minds, reveal to them that they have everything they need inside of them to do exactly what you have called them to do. Right now, touch them. Renew their mind. Renew their mind. I shut off and I shut up every thought that is being spoken to their mind by Satan. I cancel every thought. I cancel every plot and every plan of the enemy that, that is stopping the people of God from moving and to stepping out into what you have called us to do. Right now, Father God, I pray even at the end of this message, Lord, I pray that you would just um, continue to speak to people. Don't let this word leave them, but let it stay with them throughout the whole week. Continue to minister to everyone. God, continue to speak to them in their dreams, oh God. Let them know that yes, I am calling you. It's not it's not you because you need to be a pastor or an evangelist. No, but I'm calling you. Yes, you. I'm calling you to step out and pray for people that are sick. I'm calling you to, to go to people. People need you. I want to work through you. There's a work that I want to do through you. There are people out there that are hurting. There are people out there that are discouraged. And they cannot be touched unless you step out and do it. So, Lord, touch them. Speak to their hearts. Speak to their minds, Father. Let them know they have everything inside of them to do what you call them to do. Lord God, you're using every person that I'm talking to to build up. You're to build up people. You're, you're, you're using every person that I'm talking to to restore people. To reconcile people into a relationship with you. God, you're, you're calling, even as I speak, you're calling people. You're using these very people to, to heal and to transform this world, their world around them. Lord, we declare all these things to be so, Father. Continue to speak to our hearts, Lord. Continue to, to, to bother us, Father, with this until we take leaps of faith, till we take risk and do exactly what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you guys for taking the time to hear me. I don't even know how long I was, but I pray that this word has blessed you and we will see you next time. Hey, one more thing. I did want to say, if you want an opportunity to do exactly what Jesus did, join us this upcoming Saturday. We are going to be going out into the streets, you guys. And we're going to be telling people about Jesus. We're going to be going out and making disciples. We're going to do what we can to try to equip you this month. But I invite you to come with us at 1 o'clock p.m. I believe we're, we